Is there divine intervention? Hey guys, so is there divine intervention? So I just want to share this uh, story um, and there's been several others that I've become aware of, um, you know, as far as divine intervention. So divine intervention does happen, right? So this is um, after awakening, of course, because then I was able to be aware of it actually happening. So having moving out of the Buddhist center, you know, when that kind of all faded out, um, you know, I was looking for, you know, a job, trying to go back to work, find a place to live. Um, not that I didn't work while I was at the Buddha Center, but I, I had like a part-time job. So now I had to get like a full-time job, um, find a place to live. And then I came into this, um, um, I found this thing on the website, which was about, um, can't remember the name of it. But what happened is it's like at the state national parks. Um, and then I came across this website where they actually, um, you can go to the state parks like um, Yellowstone, you can work there, um, and then they do um, give you discounted food, uh, they give you uh, discounted housing, um, because uh, of obviously around those parks, you don't have a lot of housing, and you have to travel distances to get to there to be able to work. So in that favor, they give you, you know, discounted housing, things like that. Um, so I had already, um, got, um, it was called coolworks.com or something like that. The website just came to me. Um, but I had had that all set up and I was ready to go. And then, of course, um, my car was ready to go at the same time. So, um, but I didn't really know it. And I had uh, gone, got all the equipment that I was going to need because it does get colder there. Um, and so I got the different style of clothing. I had to get like hiking shoes. Uh, work shoes, certain clothing that you're going to be required to wear there, like black pants. So I went and I brought all this stuff, right, for my adventure. And then I was going to take videos, you know, of the, the parks while I was there, things like that, and put them on YouTube. Um, and then <laughs> um, I was getting my car ready for the trip there because I was going to drive. So um, my car was on its last legs, unfortunately. Um, and I didn't know that until I had gone, you know, to one of the dealers, um, one of the automobile, place, automobile places to get it fixed, oil change, you know, new tires, get everything. Now, <laughs> unfortunately, um, that person, the, the place I took it to, um, charged me a lot of money because uh, it was an older car. Again, I, it was um, on his last legs. Um, charged me a lot of money and then didn't do any work, right? So I drove off, uh, drove the car, and then um, having still having problems with it, I was like, mm, this doesn't seem right. So I took it to another place because, like, if I spent a lot of money and I went to one place and it's not fixed, um, I'm going to take it to another place to have somebody else look at it, right? I'm not going to take it back to the same place um, because if they did me wrong, then, you know, I'll be able to come back, you know, with um, what that was, right? So I, it's like getting a second opinion on a, a diagnosis, right? Which I'm going to do a video on that too as well. But anyway, <laughs> um, so I went to a different place and had um, similar same experience, you know, they neglected to tell me, you know, what was going on. And it was like, okay, next thing I know, next few days, uh, somebody else recommended uh, to go to another person. And now this wasn't like one of those chain places. This was like an independent person who actually really works on cars and does things and gets paid, you know, because um, it's like what they say about the little businesses um, versus, you know, the, the other ones, they really don't care. It's just a money-making system. Um, and so I took it there. So this is three times now I'm going. And so the first two neglected to tell me and whatever they did, but they still wanted to charge me money. It still wasn't fixed. They didn't tell me anything. Oh, nothing. You know, everything's fine. Here you go. Right. Um, so obviously I wasn't going to be able to make the trip um, with the car this way. So 
went to this other place and he was right up front with me. He's like, I'm not even going to do anything because this car, you're, you're better off just finding a new car because this isn't going to last you very long. So I wouldn't have even made it, you know, probably halfway, you know, to the job at that point, I probably would have broke down and been stuck somewhere. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that that had happened and evolved, right? And so as I was following the guidance, you know, with that, you know, because I didn't feel like going back to that person, I always go to a second person. But then I was guided to go to another person who finally um, gave me the truth, you know. And so, you know, we want to pay attention to, to those things that are going on. But that's not really the point of this video. I just wanted to share part of that ex of the experience. So um, with that being said, it was like everything was in motion to go there and all of a sudden it was like stop divine intervention right no right and things just kept evolving to where i ended up going <laughs> um i had right down to the very last moment because the minute i drove my car onto the dealership of manifesting my bronco um and having the bronco come into fulfillment and i did a video on that um I drove my car on the, it, it died, it was done, right? And so I, <laughs> I ended up having the car to the very last moment, but there was attachments to that car, you know, they, from my past pre-awakening. Um, so I've held on to that car to, <laughs> to the very last moment. And so there was some healing that happened in there because there were some attachments to that. But anyway, divine um, intervention happens, right? Because it was like I was looping back to not going as it was planned because everything was going in that direction where I was um, I was being guided to go, but then all of a sudden it was like, nope, no, we're not going, we're not doing it. And it wasn't just because of the car, um, that was just part of it, um, which divine intervention, you know, came in and was like, no, you're not gonna make it, so, right? So I ended up taking all my stuff back and didn't go in that direction, but it was like a big loop um, and unless you're actually experienced it and you probably don't understand it, but um, it, it looped me back into where I was able to get a car, you know, and it was very at the very last moment. And how the car came into play um, was a really interesting story because I had, I had manifested the Bronco, basically having the third person tell me that my car is not going to make it. I need to... Um, you know, get another vehicle and they weren't going to work on it and fix it. And they took me in there and showed me everything, right? So from that point, I was like, okay, I have to get another vehicle. So this is not going to work out, <laughs> you know, going here, I'll have to put that on the back burner. Um, so I went home and I started researching cars that are available. And this was during the COVID um, 2000, um, 2022, I believe it was, yeah. Um, and so a lot of cars weren't on the lots, right? And so what did I do? I ended up going online, looking at different cars, what I wanted. And so the only thing I really looked, looked at that really resonated to me at the time was a Bronco, right? White Bronco. I've always wanted a white car, right? And Mustangs never really uh, resonated with me. And so I didn't really want anything, you know, that was out there. Um, but the only thing that really resonated with me was the Bronco, right? So, um, What I did was I printed it out, right? And I put it, <laughs> I put it over to the side and, I'm, and I just gave it to the universe. I'm like, okay, here, you know? Um, if it's meant to be, then it'll be. Um, and I was just starting to develop my uh, credit, you know, based from pre-awakening, um, you know, having divorce and all that, blah, 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 financial situation. Um, and I was like, well, if this, is the, <laughs> if this is meant to be, it'll be. Right. And so I just put it, print it out and put it on there, you know, like kind of like um, a vision board type of scenario and just let it go for a few days. And then was just kept on with, and the next thing I know was I got this guidance to get up because um, I went to check different um, lots and nobody had any on their lot. So I was like, okay, we'll just place an order uh, for one. And then they're like, okay, well, it'll be probably about three months before one comes in. I was like, okay. So I was like, all right, whatever, and we'll just see what happens with the universe. And so I let go of control, right? I just let it go. Next thing I know, it was a few days later, and I got to wake up. It was almost like somebody was, like, waking me up, and I was like, okay, wake up. Uh, go down to the dealer, right, and go look at these other cars. And I didn't get that there was a, bron a Bronco on the 
the parking lot. But I got up, I followed, followed the guidance, um, and then went down and actually where I ended up being was like a enterprise place where they sell cars. So I used, um, used cars, um, you know, uh, after I guess they use it for rentals, uh, enterprise rental place. So they do sell cars. And how I got that was the image in my head because my brother brought a car from a, uh, <laughs> an enterprise um, vehicle place and he had a car from there. So that was the vision that I got, right? I didn't get the vision that it's a Bronco that's sitting there on the lot across the street on the highway at the other dealer. Um, I got the vision that my uh, the enterprise here sells cars, you know, they're used, reasonable price, blah, blah, blah. So I went down there and I passed right by that dealer. I didn't even look over there because I was too busy looking at the enterprise on the street. So I went around the other side of the highway, stopped there, and then looked at the cars, and none of them resonated with me, so I left there. Because um, when, when I was in one of the cars, some of the things started falling off. I was like, yeah, this is not what I want. So <laughs> I started pulling. I was like, okay, dude, I'm out of here. So pulled out of that parking lot, and then next thing I know, as I'm before I'm heading up, it was like I got this um, idea. I was like, go check the parking lot across the street. Like, okay, so I pull in there, Ford dealer, you know, I was like, I really don't want to buy a Ford car, but the Bronco is Ford, right? <laughs> so I, I pull over there, um, knowing that, you know, they're probably not going to have one. But the minute I pulled in there, right up front, in front of the building was this white Bronco. Right? Now, like, how can you, like, not see the connections here, right? So that was like purposefully uh, divine intervention, right? Because even prior to this, a few days, as I'm still in driving in this older car, you know, going around to different places, um, I came to the park that I'm in now, and wouldn't you know it, they were having an event, and pretty much every car that was in the park that day was white, right? So these are different clues that were showing up for me and so the manifestation of the getting up in the morning and going to the, the, the dealer to get the Bronco, right? So you had, I was printing out the picture, putting that like on a vision board, knowing that I only had a certain amount of time to get this new vehicle if I was gonna do that. Um, and so it was doing that and then putting it out there to the universe and then uh, you know, I came to the park to do some writing, and then every car that pulled into the parking lots in here in the park were basically white. There were all different kinds of cars that were white. Um, and then next thing I know, I wake up and a couple days later, and then I'm getting um, the idea to go to this one dealer that was related to this image that I got in my mind about Enterprise that my brother brought a car at, which took me to that dealer and then across the street from this other dealer, which was where the Bronco was. So <laughs> <coughs> I walk in there and the car is now mine, right? So I did all the papers, everything worked out. And the person I worked with, <laughs> it was so funny because even in his office, um, you know, he had like pictures of angels, things like that. I was like, how is this not divine intervention, right? So it was just like perfectly played out by the universe, just guiding me. And it's just following, you know, the course of that. And it's not like we have to be willing and, and open to receive the guidance to guide us because it may not be what we think it is, but when we get there, it is, right? We'll get other guidance to it, which is like the path of manifesting. And it's like working with the universe with that. But the other thing I wanted to talk about, you know, that was a manifesting part, but the divine guidance of intervention Right? So I could have gone on the way out to that job working at the state park or the, the whatever you want to call it, um, Yellowstone Park, um, having gone through all that, been stuck there. And divine intervention helped me from being stuck in that space, right? And then bringing myself back. Um, it also led me to the job that I've, I've been working, I'm currently in and I'm still in, you know, making videos you know on the side to develop this and then to shift out of that because i want to start a center um so that is kind of like a it's a stepping stone for me to get here to there to there to there so in the process of manifesting you know there is divine intervention there is signs 
uh, for us to be aware of. Um, so as we're manifesting, you know, it's just following these little breadcrumbs to get us to where we want or need to be. So in this, <clears throat> that would have been a, the wrong path for me to take because really for me to now look at that, you know, I would have had to share a room with somebody. I would have had to work um, long hours. I would have had only a s s short time, you know, off. Um, I wouldn't have been able to do this writing. I wouldn't be able to do these videos as I want to do them. I wouldn't be able to do a lot of things. If had I gone on that path, it would have taken me way off, uh, you know, out of direction. So I was redirected um, back to staying in Florida and not going off to the other place and doing that because that would have been a whole different um, journey. Um, but divine intervention you know, came in and took me from one place to another because I had ripped the seats out of that old car and I was putting my bike and packing everything in there that I was going to need. I got rid of everything, sold everything else because I was already living like a, a minimalist in the Buddhist center. I didn't really have a lot. So I just got rid of everything else and got whatever I needed to take with me. So coming down to the last minute, it was like, no, nope. universe is like, no, nope. change tracks. And I was like trying to follow all these guidances as they were coming in, um, you know, to get myself to where I am now. And so it kind of was like a, a, it's um, your divine guidance, you know, um, um, interference. Um, and so it does happen, you know. And so I don't know if that's helpful for you. So when you're feeling divine inter uh, interference or intervention, um, uh, you want to follow that, you know, and anything as far as manifesting, just follow the path, the breadcrumbs that are being left for you, right? And try not to negate them. And then, because um, a lot of times if we're thinking, oh, well, you know, I really don't want to go here. I don't want to do that. It doesn't mean that's what it is. Um, it's possibly meaning because there's something else in that vicinity or in that space um, that's going to be what you want or need, right? Even if it's just a conversation with a person, they're going to lead you on another path, right? So try not to negate our guidance, system. And with that, we do want to develop our um, innate ability of intuition and guidance, right? And listening here, not out there, <laughs> right? Sometimes it does come from out there. Um, however, we want to be able to, okay, in, in our own intuition, you know, is that coming from source through them to me as a message? Or is that just coming from that person as in their ego? So you have that as well. So you just have to know the difference between that. But um, there is, uh, you know, divine intervention, um, and it's just being aware that that it is in your life and it, how it's playing a role for you. If you have any questions or want it to be clarified a little bit more, um, definitely reach out to me. Drop any questions um, in, in below in the comments. Like, share, and subscribe because, you know, this does help me to get this going here and share with a lot of other people on how this happens, you know, and a lot of other information that I have to share um, so if you do feel it's helpful, um, please do that. Um, and again, um, if you have any questions for me and maybe I can help you with that or want to book a session, um, just reach out. All right. And happy journeys.